Classic movie fans, Rick Nine G here. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to be talking about Back to the Future. Now, this is arguably one of the best movies of all time. In my opinion, this is my favorite movie of all time. My favorite trilogy of all time, all three movies. And we're going to get right into it. We're going to be talking about hidden gems, hidden pieces of information, Easter eggs that you may not have known about Back to the Future the movie. So let me get right into it. Thank you for commenting, liking, and subscribing to this video. Now let's begin in the beginning of this movie. There will be spoilers here. I know the movie is decades and decades old, but if you haven't seen this movie, you really have to do yourself a favor and watch it. Now, of course, this film is about time travel, and this is how the movie begins. We're in Doc's garage, and the camera is panning around, listening to all these clocks ticking, all these beautiful clocks, and one stands out to us. That is the one with the very famous comedian on it, Harold Lloyd. Now, if you notice, it passes by pretty quickly, but he is hanging on to the hands of a clock. Now, two things about this. This is a reference to the movie Safety Last, that's a movie from 1923, but most importantly, this alludes to the climax of Back to the Future where Doc is hanging from the clock tower at the end. So this is beautiful foreshadowing by the writer, Bob Gale, Bob Zemeckis, and as well as Steven Spielberg. I don't know how many of you noticed this, but I think it's absolutely amazing. Again, there's so much in this movie, so much that's hidden, so I'm just going to pick a few that you may enjoy, and if you want to see more, just let me know. Now, as the camera continues to pan along, we see something on the bed. You know, everything's messy, everyone's just tossed around, and in this opening shot, you see a camcorder. It's a JVC video camera that Marty later uses in the movie. Now, he uses it when he gets back into 1955 he has it in the car right next to him in the passenger seat when he appears in his quote-unquote radiation suit and then later on he uses the camera many times as well not only that but you see some fast food wrappers that are strewn about and that's a pretty good indicator to what is to follow with that scene with marty and the skateboard how it's right next to burger king well look at that an illusion to what was happening so there's a lot of little hidden things that I just want to point it to you. I absolutely love it. Now this one you have to dive a little bit deeper into, but when we first see Marty and he's powering up the speaker system and we're looking at the amp, there's a little uh, label on it, a little red label, and it says this um, lettering. It says capital C, capital R, and capital M. 114. Now you may think, what in the world is this about? Well, it's the amp that's powering that giant guitar. And you may know Stanley Kubrick's Dr. Strangelove. That is a popular phrase, or that is a popular number from that. It's also used in A Clockwork Orange, as well as Star Trek Deep Space Nine. So that number and that combo has been seen in other productions as well. Now, this is one that I absolutely love. Now, Marty is auditioning for the talent show for his school, and they have the judges there. And one of the weird looking dress judges, he's wearing this checkered suit and these geeky glasses and his hair is combed back. Well, that guy with that megaphone isn't just a random guy, a random actor. It's actually, and really, Huey Lewis himself. Yep, the guy who sings the main song of the movie, The Power of Love. Yeah, that's him. He makes a special cameo in the movie. And as I watched this as a kid, I never, ever knew this. And when I found out later on, I was completely impressed and surprised. You think that's the only hidden secret? In regards to the talent show audition, well, no, there's a quite big one that I want you to know. Now, one more in regards to the audition that I do want to let you know about, and that is Michael J. Fox and his guitar skills. Now, he had to be instructed how to play the guitar in a certain way, and now he is playing the guitar in this audition, and he makes his way to this guy with blonde hair. He has a black cap, sunglasses, and is playing, it seems like the bass guitar right next to him and he's auditioning as well and the group is called the pinheads right well this mulleted guy uh, with this hat and so forth that was michael j fox's real life guitar instructor his name was paul hansen and he's the one who actually coached him 
and allowed him to practice and showed him all the moves so that he could play for the movie. In fact, all the Enchantment Under the Sea dance scenes, I mean, Paul showed Michael how he had to act and how he had to play. That is awesome. Now, when Marty first accidentally goes back to 1955, he is instantly transported after hitting 88 miles an hour and to his surprise, he runs into a hedge. It's not just a hedge, it's actually two pines. It's two giant pines and he knocks one of them down. Now what's interesting is that when he came to this location, this was the location 30 years back of what was once the Twin Pines Mall. Now what's really cool is after the movie continues, remember, he knocked one of the pines down, so there's only one standing. The whole movie happens, right? Uh, Doc is on the clock and Marty shoots back to 1985. Now there's a new future and the new future pays homage to the pine that was standing, but this time it's not called the Twin Pines Mall, but you notice it's the Lone Pine Mall, because why? There's only one alone pine that is left standing. So that is so cool that that little detail, it's not rubbed in our face, but it definitely appears and it is a wonderful one. The next one I have for you is pretty awesome. Now again, this is one that I want to bring to you just because of the memory of the man himself, Eddie Van Halen. I mean, he was such an iconic guy. And now let me tell you about his relation to the movie Back to the Future. Now do you remember when Marty dressed up in the radiation suit and went to see his father, his younger father, George McFly, while he was sleeping, and he plays that loud Eddie Van Halen tape? Well, let me show you the, play, the tape here. Now when he puts it into the cassette player, you can see it says Van Halen in big letters, all caps, essentially taking up the place of the entire white little label. But look how Edward is very small and on the top, almost like it was squeezed in. Well, that actually has a reason. That was on purpose. And I'll tell you why. That is because the band itself, Van Halen, they didn't give the film permission to use their music. But the man, Eddie Van Halen, he was okay with it. So the cameo of his music in Back to the Future let everyone know that, well, the musician would be put in the film. His music would be in the film. So what they had to do, they essentially were highlighting the band Van Halen, but it was only Eddie who gave permission. So they put his name Edward on the top after they found out the band wouldn't give permission. And so since he did, they just made the focus on the man. Edward or Eddie Van Halen. So that is an awesome, awesome story that I think everyone should know. Well, that's it for this video, everyone. Thank you so much for the support as always. It's one of my favorite movies. I would love to make other feature videos where I further dissect this movie and even number two and number three go with bloopers. I mean, I could probably make close to a hundred videos just off the top of my head of the movie with different topics, different behind the scenes information, how they made movies, where they filmed it, locations, all so much. Let me know if you'd be interested in this, if you like this movie, and don't forget to browse my channel. We'll see you all next time and don't forget everyone, be hopeful. Thank you so much to my supporters, especially my diamond tier patrons. Harold P, Terry Y, Jerry D, Citizen Kane 359, Jennifer P, David D, Kevin K, Sally N, and Vito L. If you want to join the Patreon community, check the link in the description below. Thank you.